Hey YouTube, it's Snot Otter again, and today I'm going to talk about the W.M. Browning Cretaceous Fossil Park. This is one of my personal favorites, so I'll try to show you guys as much as possible. Located in northeast Mississippi, the W.M. Browning Cretaceous Fossil Park was the state's first roadside park dedicated to paleontology. The park is in Prentice County, Mississippi, and can be found directly off of US 45 in Frankstown, Mississippi, where 45 intersects County Road 7450. The parking area is on the east side of US 45 and is marked by an 8-foot granite monolith engraved with a short description of the park. There's also a highly noticeable 50-foot outcrop along the creek that's easily seen from the road. The park lies on 20 Mile Creek and the abundance of fossils was originally discovered in 1990 during the construction of US 45. The highway cut exposed shark and dinosaur teeth and attracted collectors from across the nation. The area was officially designated the W.M. Brown and Cretaceous Fossil Park on May 6, 1995, and throughout its history has been a destination for fossil hunters and enthusiasts, as well as geocachers and even school field trips. I'll go into more detail about the geology in a bit, but the site contains fossils of organisms that lived in a shallow sea that covered the central United States 75 million years ago. Most notably, the site holds an abundance of shark teeth, but oysters, ammonites, and very rarely dinosaur bones are also found. So how exactly do you find these fossils? The fossils are washed out of a one-foot layer of sand directly under the chalk deposits and are darker in color than the sand. This contrast in color between the fossils and the sand makes the search slightly easier. There are several ways to get the fossils out of the sand, but the easiest way is to use a sifter. Many things work great for sifting out the sand, including colanders and strainers, as long as the holes are big enough to allow the mud and sand to pass through and small enough to keep the fossils in. I use a homemade sieve with quarter inch chicken wire which seems to be the perfect size. Some strainers are small enough to simply scoop into the sand, but a shovel is needed to scoop sand into larger strainers. Once you have sand in the strainer, run it through the water until the sand has been washed out and the larger materials are exposed. These larger materials may include pebbles, freshwater clams, and fossils. Finding the fossils among the dark pebbles requires patience and a sharp eye. Make sure to check several times as shark teeth are easy to overlook. For the best chance of finding fossils, look in the areas of the creek where the large materials aggregate, look around boulders, and your chances will be best if you go after a large rain since this will wash some new fossils into the creek. Make sure you keep a bag or bucket handy in case you want to keep any of the fossils you find, and try to keep the park clean. I always make sure to pick up any pieces of trash or glass that I come across. Being a public park, the fossils that you find are yours to keep. Okay, now on to the boring stuff. It's fun to find fossils, but it can also be very educational, so I'll give some information about the geologic history of northern Mississippi. The fossils were deposited 75 million years ago during the Campanian stage of the Cretaceous period. This is a time when non-avian dinosaurs still roamed the earth, large marine reptiles swam in the sea, and pterosaurs still ruled the skies. Life wasn't the only thing that looked different, however. The continents were in different positions than they are today, and the face of North America was drastically different. During the Cretaceous, central North America, where the Great Plains lie today, was covered in a warm, shallow sea, and northern Mississippi was covered in what's known as the Mississippi Embayment. This bay has a complex geologic history, but I'll try to summarize it briefly. The Washita Mountains and the Appalachians were once part of the same continuous mountain chain. The Appalachians were much taller than at the present and were formed when North America and Africa collided 300 million years ago. The Washington Mountains formed around the same time when North America and South America collided. These three continents, along with Eurasia, Antarctica, and Australia, formed the supercontinent Pangaea. Pangaea began to split as the continents drifted apart 95 million years ago. Roy Van Arsdale and Randall Cox proposed an explanation for the embayment that involved an uplift of the appalachia washington mountain chain as the tectonic plate moved over the Bermuda Volcanic Hotspot. 
This led to rapid erosion of the uplifted land, and as the plate moved away from the hotspot, this region of crust cooled and sank, forming a large basin. There were no ice caps during the warm Cretaceous, and the high sea levels caused the basin to fill with water, forming the Mississippi Embayment. It's here that the coffee sand formation formed, which now supplies the sand found in Frankstown. During the Campanian stage, 75 million years ago, sea levels again rose, and the Demopolis chalk formation that overlies the coffee sand was formed. The Demopolis chalk can be seen at the top of the 50-foot outcrop at the fossil park. At the contact between these two formations is an unconformity, or an erosional surface, known to some as the Frankstown sand. This one-foot layer of sand is a lag deposit of vertebrate fossils and oysters. This dense layer of fossils lies directly on top of the upper boundary of the coffee sand and includes fossil shark teeth of the genera Scapanorhynchus and Squilicorax, ray teeth, dinosaur bones, oysters of the genus Exogyra, gastropods, ammonites, and more. Another interesting feature of the W.M. Browning Cretaceous Fossil Park is the presence of large boulders in the creek bed. These boulders are actually large concretions from the coffee sand formation. Concretions form when calcium carbonate or silica seep into sediments and act as a cement, causing the sediments to solidify into hard masses. The concretions here contain fossil bivalves that are worth checking out. It's also possible in some parts of the creek bank to see the pits left where the concretions were eroded from the wall. Obviously, an in-depth understanding of the geology isn't necessary to appreciate the fossils in the park, but it's interesting to know the rich context surrounding these extinct organisms. This park is a great place for anybody to visit, make a family outing, get away from the urban life, and be a part of Mississippi's natural history. For more information, I'd recommend checking out the link in the description or drop a comment below and I'll be happy to help. This is Snot Otter and I'll catch you later.